continue now, down to the last stop of our favorite horror movie list. We hope that our previous entries have piqued your interest. Tonight we offer 5 more selections, but the very last one is the pick we feel is the best horror movie of all time. So sit back and enjoy. And also, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh, but more on that later. How old are you? Twelve. Is there someone inside you? Sometimes. The first movie on today's list is the quintessential possession horror movie. Not only has it influenced the way possession horror movies are made, but also shaped how we imagine demonic possession in general. The Exorcist. Reagan is a charming 12-year-old girl that has been acting strangely. So much so, in fact, that her mother has her see many doctors and specialists. Having exhausted the avenues that science offers, the mother turns to a priest, hoping that there is something he can do to help fight the malicious being that has taken over her daughter's body and is close to taking her soul. What an excellent day for an exorcism. You'd like that? Intensely. Growing up, I heard much about The Exorcist, that it was the scariest movie ever, that it was cursed, that watching it was dangerous. Needless to say, this movie's scare factor was extremely hyped up, long before I ever thought myself brave enough to watch it. In the middle of the day, of course. I was pleasantly surprised that the actual plot feels more like an investigation that happens to delve into dark supernatural areas. I'm telling you that that thing upstairs isn't my daughter. Now I want you to tell me that you know for a fact that there's nothing wrong with my daughter except in her mind. Yes, there are strong and disturbing visuals, but they are just byproducts of the central themes. This movie is about a struggle with faith, a mother that is trying to save her child from something she doesn't understand, and a priest wrestling with his beliefs to do so. The first time I watched The Babadook, I went in blind just knowing it was a haunted house type story from Australia. I was expecting jump scares and gore, but in the end, I found that the film was more psychological in nature. Amelia is a single mother that is still grieving the loss of her husband. On top of that, she has a strained relationship with her troubled son Samuel. Their home life becomes more complicated after Amelia reads a bedtime story from a mysterious children's book called Mr. Babadook. If it's in a word or it's in a look, you can't get rid of the Babadook. I think by now you've noticed that a few of our selections deal with the gradual disintegration of the family unit. We're supposed to feel safe and secure at home. Parents are supposed to care for their children and protect them from harm. Anything that alters this paradigm creates unease and fear. And in the Babadook, we see the slow progression of a parent becoming the threat. Is this the only way I can trust you not to embarrass me in front of our neighbors? Amelia has a hard time connecting with her son because he is a constant reminder of the husband that she's lost. She loves her son, but she doesn't really seem to like him. And to be honest, he's kind of annoying, but eventually, you feel sorry for him. Amelia's inability to deal with her grief is augmented by the mysterious entity that is laying siege to her small family. But regardless of what any monster can do, it's really the corruption of the mother archetype that makes this movie truly terrifying. Now, if you're scared by the daunting task of preparing meals for yourself, well our kind new sponsor HelloFresh is here to help you out. I've been wanting to cook up new and interesting dishes for myself, but sometimes I just haven't had the time to go to the grocery store or have the creativity to know where to start. That's why HelloFresh has been very helpful. They have a lot of different types of meals you can choose from, and they even have dishes for specific dietary needs. Inside, you'll find foolproof step-by-step -step instructions on how to prepare your meal with all the ingredients you'll need. I tried out making a carp smart cottage pie and it was very good and comforting. Not only did I enjoy the meal but it can give you a boost in confidence in your cooking abilities and it was cheaper than ordering it at a restaurant. Another plus is that HelloFresh is the first carbon neutral meal company because all their packaging is recyclable. So try it out for yourself. Use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code POGHF7491 for 65% off. Plus, free shipping on your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. See what appetizing dishes you can make. Now back to the list. The next movie feels like a combination of the Blair Witch Project's grounded handheld reality and the bleakness of the wailing. 
Noroi is a found footage type movie that follows a filmmaker that's investigating a series of supernatural events. As his investigation deepens, we get to know more about Kagutaba, the demonic entity that is at the source of the mystery. It seems that all those who come in contact or get close to Kagutaba eventually end up dead. One of Noroi's strengths is that it's filmed in such a way that makes it feel authentic and real. It's a prime example of what a found footage horror movie should be. Nothing is clean or refined, the characters are mostly unassuming, there is no obvious setup that is camera ready. It feels like a banal psychic phenomena documentary that accidentally captured something that it wasn't supposed to. This further increases the sensation that what you are watching isn't safe, and that anything can happen. From the start, we already know that the filmmaker disappears, but it's still devastating to have the actual event play out in the climax. It is a perfect representation of the unforgiving consequences of the Japanese viral curse. It talked to me and said that it wants my family dead. The following film on our list is both a possession and a haunted house movie, a well-rounded early 2010s horror treat. In 1971, a family of seven moves into an old farmhouse in Rhode Island. From the start, strange things start happening. Odd sounds, random cold spots, horrible smells, and terrifying encounters that not only frighten the family, but gradually places them in harm's way. A couple of paranormal investigators are then called to help figure out what is causing the supernatural activity and come up with a difficult task of stopping it before it destroys the family. One of the things that stayed with me the most after watching The Conjuring is the creepy atmosphere that is crafted since the beginning of the film. It grows with each tense moment and builds to the impactful final set piece. It pulls you in with a family story and makes you care for them, so you actually worry for their safety. I like that its scares are well built and earned, even the jump scares don't feel cheap. This is the type of movie that's great to watch with friends that still haven't experienced this thrill ride yet. Here's Johnny! <laughs> And so, after exploring vampires, aliens, shapeshifters, witches, demons, and all types of haunted characters, we've reached our final pick, among the snow-covered Rockies of Colorado, in a hotel whose history is drenched in blood and hungry for more, The Shining. Jack Torrance has just gotten a job as caretaker of the Overlook Hotel during its off-season. His wife Wendy and son Danny also move into the hotel, making it their home for the following months. During their stay, the hotel's dark past begins to exert an influence on Jack, as well as on Danny. But it inches Jack closer to a unique type of madness that could push him to commit terrible acts upon his own family. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. If by now you know nothing about The Shining, that would be very impressive. Much has been said reviewed, hypothesized, and discussed about this movie ever since it came out. I first found out about The Shining through arguably one of the best Treehouse of Horror segments. Then I read the novel, and saw that although the movie diverges greatly from the source material, it found greatness in its own right. And to be honest, the story on its face is a very simple one, but it's in Kubrick's unnerving and evocative imagery where this film stands out among the rest. Come and play with us. Come play with us, Danny. From the start, there's this foreboding atmosphere and expectation that at some point, things will go bad, and there will be blood. It's an oppressive mood that originates in the Overlook itself, like a hidden protagonist that's pushing and prodding, hoping to exact its will on the family. As harsh as Stanley Kubrick's directing methods were, they succeeded in giving us an unhinged performance on the part of Jack Nicholson, as a man that's slowly descending into madness until he snaps. Everything about this movie, from the camera work, to the music, to the performances, the stares, the uncanny moments, it's all carefully planned to keep us on edge, to feel unnerved, even during casual conversations, to feel unsafe at every turn, which is the true essence of horror. 
Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. We hope you enjoyed this three-part list. And please let us know down in the comments, what is your favorite all-time horror movie? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Until next time.